Hey guys, welcome to Black Belt Breakdown. This breakdown features Robert Deagle, a brown belt under John Danaher from Henzo Gracie, New York. I first saw Robert on Instagram uh, where he posts a lot of flow drills, a lot of philosophies, a lot of insights into how to train jiu-jitsu, specifically leg locks. If you enjoy the content, please make sure you like, share and subscribe. This one had me scratching my head. <laughs> This is probably as detailed, if not more detailed, than Lloyd's breakdown, which is insane. In this video, there are a few editing issues. I seem to have had a, a problem with Skype. Hopefully, it doesn't ruin the experience of the breakdown and you still enjoy it. Thanks. So the first thing you'll notice is my elbows on the inside. If we pause right here. So here, yeah, I have my elbows on the inside just to ensure that my opponent doesn't have the ability to, um, you know, look for rolling Kimuras at the outset because I'm, I'm fairly close to him, so that's something that I, I want to be um, wary of. Um, I had somebody in a previous match get a rolling Kimura on me. He managed to not finish it, thankfully I got it out, but it taught me an important lesson about elbow placement. Um, yeah, anyway, so if we go forward... So I'm looking to hand fight and then entangle his legs. So pause right here. So usually when we're looking to elevate somebody, what we're looking to do is scoot our hips underneath our opponent's hips uh, with some kind of grip on his upper body to um, bring our back flat to the floor while elevating his hips with ours. Um, sort of like, a, like how a, a rocking chair functions. Um, he had some size in me, so I didn't want to use that method in this match. Instead, what I do is I fold to my left hip with my right hand grasping his uh, left tricep. The aim here is to position my body in such a way that it's easy for my left leg to wrap around his left leg from, from behind it. Yeah. Lock him up a figure of four. Um, so, oh, yeah, so if we hit play, we can uh, see that happen. Yeah, so you look right here. So what I, what I did was, so right there you can see the figure four. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, so if we go back a second, pulling forward, my left hand goes behind the crook of his knee to pull as my right leg goes around his side and then his hamstring. And then my knee comes back and I lock up the figure four with my legs, establishing the bottom cross Ashigarabi. So this position here, um, maybe go forward just a little bit so you can see more clearly the position of my legs around his hips or his thigh. Yeah, that's perfect right there. Very, very good. Okay, so this position here, I get asked more technical questions about this position than, than anything else. Okay? Um, it's because people, I think, usually when they do a kind of wasabi, they get smashed in this position. So they're curious, like, how were you able to not get, get smashed? Okay, the biggest mistake people make from this position is either going too deep or too far with the right leg, okay? If the right leg, if, if the foot penetrates too deep between my opponent's legs, what happens is I have no structure and he can like sprawl on top of me and, and crush me essentially. And all sorts of bad things start to happen. Like your, your back can honestly be exposed fairly easily there. Um, the other bad thing we want to avoid is our right, in this case, my right hip, um, going too far over my opponent's left hip, like flaring hard, mm -hmm. that's not the safest thing for the ligaments of my knee. So what I want to do here is I want to have it be the case that my right knee is situated somewhere on his torso, either his stomach or um, could even be like the ribs around this area here. We don't want to go too far, but because like I said, we don't want to flare the knee. Um, but as long as it's situated somewhere on the torso, you can frame with it without... Um, putting unnecessary risk uh, to the ligaments of your knee. Um, now, the, the next thing to take note of is what I'm doing with my right hand. I'm framing here. I won't always do this. This isn't like a thing you have to do, whereas the thing that I described uh, with the structure of my leg is something you really have to do if you want to perform a successful kind of wasabi. But what I'm doing with my right hand here definitely can help. It, it, it's a, a useful frame. Okay. Uh, the next thing is what I'm going to do um, regarding my left hand. If I can, I'd like to reach for his secondary leg 
with like a scoop grip, which would allow me to bind his legs together and it makes the act of, of toppling him over very, very easy. However, in this match, I wasn't able to do that. Instead, because I couldn't, I couldn't reach it. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grasp the end of the lever of his primary leg. That's the leg that I'm entangling. And I'm going to pull that towards me as my legs push um, his hips downwards. So if we, we hit play, we'll see that happen. Okay. So I've slowed it down a little bit. Good, yeah, that'll be helpful. So here you see what's happening. I'm pulling on the lower half of his leg and I'm pushing on the upper half of his leg, essentially. Okay, now, yeah, pause here. Keep pause right here. This is good. So now I'm in the cross ashigurami position. What's important to note about the cross ashigurami position is that um, his two legs serve fundamentally different purposes for me um, in terms of my goals. Okay, and the leg that I have my legs entangling so in this case his left leg we call that his primary leg because that's the leg which i'm going to launch my most significant offense against so i'm going to look to try to perform an inside heel hook on that leg okay, okay. now most of his best defensive measures are going to come about when he has the free and unrestricted ability to move his right leg which we call his secondary leg we can apply submissions to that leg, for instance, such as like reverse figure four Achilles locks and uh, outside heel hooks, but I mean, they're not anywhere near as good as the inside heel hook on the primary leg. So that's that's mainly what I focus on. Um, yeah, so, but I have an Achilles lock on it to prevent him from uh, escaping by turning out. What he's gonna wanna do is take his uh, left knee and point it towards, if, if you can see where the ref is. Yep. Yeah, right there. Yeah. If you can point that knee in that direction, that would be something which would inhibit my ability to attain heel exposure, uh, you know, which is the first prerequisite to applying a heel hook, right? You got to expose the heel, right? You got to catch the heel. Um, if he can turn the knee towards me, that means he can turn his heel into my ribs and I'm not going to be able to heel hook him. Mm -hmm. However, we're going to see this match. Um, this, this particular opponent um, wasn't maybe wasn't aware of that defense, or maybe just caught got caught up in the heat of the moment, and he didn't he didn't perform it. Um, instead, he you can see what he's doing. He's kind of like driving towards me, um, which that can work in like 50-50, but in cross ashi, it's totally uh, it's totally ineffective. Well, I shouldn't say that because he had he had minor success with this at one point, but we're gonna see in the long run it just doesn't it just doesn't work. Uh, yeah, so here I'm controlling the secondary leg, but I'm gonna let go of it in a moment because I I made the in match determination that he he didn't know to turn out. You should never let go of that secondary leg in cross ashi, uh, or I should say you should never let go of it without a purpose um, because. If you do, then they can turn out. But this guy didn't know to do that. So anyway, we, we, if we continue onward. So here, I let go of the secondary leg, and we see he keeps his legs crossed. That's not the correct decision to make there. And we can go back in a second. Right. You see where, I mean, like, he's, he's essentially just trying to grab his shin and pull it towards him. This is never going to stop us from exposing the heel in a cross Ashi situation. This is... This is very bad defense. He's doing everything incorrect. What he should be doing is turning the other way, and then I would have to spin and chase the heel, and it's a it's a whole battle there. But he's not even engaging in that. So here, I'm doing something which I consider kind of like, you know, it's, it's quite frankly not high-level technique because he's not forcing me to perform high-level technique because his defense isn't operating at a high level. So I expose his heel here, uh, so let's, yeah, let's go forward to when I catch the heel. So I'm able to expose his heel here. And what I'm trying to do here is uh, I'm trying to get him to rotate so I can put his knee on the mat. Okay, I want his, I want my right hip on the mat. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so that I can uh, put his knee on the mat and make it hard for him to hand fight and apply much stronger finishing mechanics. He wasn't rotating, so we're gonna see in a second I shift to 
I instead try to put his heel on the mat. So first I was trying to get him to rotate so I could put his knee on the mat. He didn't, he didn't rotate. Instead, he's, he's just coming towards me and hand fighting, which is not, not what you're supposed to do. But it did hold me off for a moment. And I, I instead shift to try to put the heel on the mat. So let's, let's keep moving forward. Okay, so just a quick question, sorry. If you were to turn onto your right hip and put the right, uh, oh, sorry, put his left knee on the floor, would that enable him to start spinning? No, no. So if I, let's say I were to, so the, my goal here was to get him to rotate a little bit. Okay. So if, if he rotates a little bit and I'm able to get onto my right hip, what, what you're going to see ultimately in the finish at the end, mm-hmm. I, I do succeed in achieving this. Well, he kind of gives it to me, but whatever, I still got it. <laughs> so <laughs> we get on our, I, I get up my right hip, and then if I can put that knee on the mat, that's my favorite um, finishing situation in the cross ashi. Okay. Um, it's actually very hard to continue to rotate when the knee is either touching the mat or close to the mat. I, most of my best finishes in cross ashi come in that situation. We can almost think of it as a, a backside cross ashi. You know, backside 50-50 is very popular. Um, backside cross ashi, um, which I finish here, is it's my favorite cross ashi finishing situation. Okay. Um, yeah. So anyway, so let's, let's, let's go forward a bit. We'll see. He doesn't, he's not rotating. He's just driving into me. And so I, I so right about here, I realize, okay, I'm not really getting the pressure that I need. So I make the decision. I turn, I try to put the heel on. You see how I put the heel on the mat? Mm-hmm. This is, if you can't get the knee on the mat, the heel on the mat is another strong way we can bend the leg. So here I'm going to, I, I do a good job of bending the leg, but I'm, I'm, we're going to talk about in a second why I'm not able to ultimately get the, the breaking mechanics that I need. Um, if the heel can go on the mat, what I can do is I can lift my hips high and then I can bridge my hips in, which ultimately is going to force a bend, right? So we establish the prerequisite conditions for uh, braking mechanics and then we actually apply the braking mechanics, right? It's like we set the braking mechanics in place and then we put them into motion. We don't want to put the braking mechanics into motion before we've given them a chance to succeed, okay? So here, um, to his credit, even though I think this is like a sloppy unintelligent defense he's he's tough as shit and he is he's hand fighting and, and not giving up right so um so here just about this time um we're gonna see this this finish does not work and i could hear gary tone in my corner and brandon bennett um calling out to me to um uh, stay calm and i intentionally let go of the leg to regain control of the secondary leg to make sure he didn't escape the position so the mechanics didn't feel right on this specific heel hook i just wanted to reset and get another shot um yeah so if we if we hit play we, we'll see him hand fighting yeah he's doing a to his credit he's doing a good job man but he's a tough fucking guy and i just there was just not enough like pop there so we're gonna see i let go of the leg is the pop a feeling or a sound or what is um, the well, I just I, it, I I felt that there was just not sufficient strength to like break his leg. It okay. just wasn't there, you know. And so you see, I, I let go of his heel purposely to regain control of his secondary leg, so I would get another I, I would get another shot basically. Okay, and when I did this, I could hear uh, Gary and uh, Professor Brandon Bennett calling out that you know, stay calm, you're gonna get another shot, you're gonna expose the heel again. Yeah. yeah. So I let go of the leg on purpose. That wasn't he didn't slip that or anything. Um, yeah, so I let go and I regain control of the secondary leg. And we'll see here what I do with my, my left knees on the inside. I don't want it there. I want it on the outside. So yeah, I pull it forward and then I put my knee on the outside to get better control. And now here, look, so stop right here. So he spun the wrong way again, mm-hmm. right? So here, he just gave me a backside cross Ashi. Whenever we have, um, a backside situation, the last thing uh, we want to do from a defensive perspective is have a bent leg, which is exactly what he has right here. Okay. The great strength, for instance, of the backside 50-50 position is that it forces a bend in our opponent's leg by, by putting pressure to the back of the knee. This is a backside cross Ashi. It doesn't operate in the same way. He could be extending that leg, but he just, you know, he isn't, he's, he's not aware of that defensive mm-hmm. mechanic. Um, so because his leg is bent and he's in a backside cross Ashi, 
Um, the same thing applies for backside cross ashi and backside 50-50. If our leg from a defensive perspective is bent, we are in a lot of trouble. I recognize that. And we see here, I take my right hand, I grasp his heel, and I immediately expose his heel um, with my, my left hand. So I catch the heel with the right hand, and then I grasp a hold of his heel with my, my right um, right arm. Yeah, so we'll hit, hit play. Uh, yeah. Catch the heel, and then I clutch the pose right here. So now the next thing I'm looking to do is I'm looking to drive the knee down to the mat. Yeah. Okay, now, so now he's going to go in the direction that he should have been going in the first place, which is towards uh, the, the ref has moved. So can't use the yeah, ref. Yeah. <laughs> but it, where the ref once was, right? So, to your um, left. Yes, to my left, right? So he's trying to, he, he should have been going there in the beginning. Now, this is not the right time to be doing this because now he's going into the force of my heel hook. Mm -hmm. I'm driving down, uh, my upper body is driving down towards the floor to my right and he's helping me apply braking mechanics to his leg by back stepping and if we if we hit play here yeah yeah and when he and when he did that right right there i started to hear the damage in the leg yeah it was it yeah. was like yeah we see he's, he's he's gingerly walking let's go back and, and look at that again so I'll go um, from here. Because this was a really nice detail where you said about your left knee being inside and you're not wanting it there. Yeah, so my left knee being on the inside makes it difficult for me to maintain control of his uh, secondary leg. Okay, He can escape this position in two main ways, rotationally or laterally. Right, He can rotate, which is what I've kind of been advocating for this whole time, or he can move his hips laterally backwards and just free his knee from my knee line, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that, that can work. That is a, a defensive strategy which can have success. So um, here, if I were to keep my left knee inside, I don't really have a good control of his um, uh, left leg with with my legs. Um, and and a, a big part of that is because of where my knee is, my left knee. If my left knee is on the outside, what I can do is I can get better control of his leg by turning my hips the way I want them. Whereas here, it wouldn't be too hard for him to take his left knee and just move backwards and, and free it from my knee line, which is obviously not what I want. Um, so what I do is, see, I'm grasping the top of the knee. I'm going to take my left knee, bring it underneath his secondary leg such that I'm then able to keep both his legs confined within my hips. So we'll move forward and, and have a look at that. And uh, not not the best angle, but yep, you can see right there. See, I mean, yeah. how both his legs are inside my hips. And then he turns the wrong way. So go, go back a second, go back. I'm trying to, try to just get the, yep, yeah, right there. So you see how he's turning away from the ref? Yeah. This is what we want in cross Ashi or anytime, um, so someone is looking for an inside heel hook on us. This is never what we want to do. Cross Ashi, 50-50, outside Senkaku, et cetera, et cetera, right? That leg, um, in this case, his left leg, he's exposing it for me. So, yeah, he's making things very, very easy for me. And I kind of made the assessment in the match that he clearly didn't seem to understand that he was doing that. So that's why I, I, I was okay with letting go of the heel exposure the first time because I... I just knew I was going to get it again because he wasn't defending properly. So all I had to do was just stay patient and I'm have another shot at it. So yeah, we'll look at this, this one last time. And uh, so here, I essentially do, so we pause right here. I essentially do a variation on uh, what we call an over-under. Um, an over-under is a, a method by which we can expose the heel in mm -hmm. cross Ashi. Um, and uh, yeah, I didn't really even have to set it up too much because he kind of gave it to me. This is an example of what I call, uh, I, this is a tennis terminology, but I, I think it can be used in jiu-jitsu as well, an unforced error. Yeah, I use it a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it fits with jiu-jitsu very well, mm -hmm. right? We have unforced and forced errors. High-level jiu-jitsu is all about forced errors, right? Here, this is not an, un I'm sorry, this is a, not a forced error. This is an unforced error where, you know, but if the fact of the matter is, if someone yeah. gives you 
that like you have to take it right yeah he's he's hitting the ball into the net himself yeah yeah exactly yeah so here i grab and the truth of it is i'm gonna be honest there's something very valuable about learning how to apply heel hooks against people who don't know how to do heel hooks mm-hmm. because that's going to be <laughs> most of your opponents like most people do not really understand that, even today how to defend heel hooks properly it's still something of like a like unknown art so to speak mm-hmm. right and um at the end of the day of course we want most to be capable of applying heel hooks against you know intelligent people who we're gonna have to force errors against but at the same time there's something to be said for understanding how to apply the very easy offensive mechanics uh of you know uh unforced errors against people who, who don't know how to defend themselves intelligently so yeah all right anyway so we'll have a look at it one last time i'm gonna send it even slower because that to that is really nice and then, yeah, it's, yeah. The very yeah, so go back. I'm going to show just one detail, which is very key for how to expose the heel from a backside situation. Yeah, so go like literally once. Watch when I grab the heel, and then look what I do with my left arm. So I grab the heel. And now stop right here. I don't know, you gotta stop it, you gotta stop it in time. <laughs> it's right when I put my, my left arm in front of his leg. Yeah, right here, this is, this is good. So see my, my right hand, I'm grasping his heel. Okay, when we're looking for heel exposure here, mm-hmm. my, a uh, uh, common mistake is people will um, take their arm and they'll sort of just try to grasp the heel right away. That's not the right thing to do. What we wanna do is we wanna take our elbow, in this case my left elbow, and strike our opponent's toes in such a way that it pushes the toes back, and then the heel essentially exposes itself. So it's more about striking the toes. Anyhow, I'm gonna bring the elbow back, I strike the toes, and then the heel becomes exposed. Yeah, I mean, that's good enough. <laughs> the issue is, is that all of that was done in like less than a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you're not to make sense what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, anyway, you strike the toes back, and then the heel is right there, right? Rather than. So, think about the toes first, and then the heel second. Okay. Uh, That's an yeah. interesting point. Yeah, so then I, I've got the heel hook, and now, again, the goal here, what I'm looking to do, is drive the knee down onto the mat. He essentially. Um, if I were him in this situation, this is a very difficult thing to do, but what I would try to do is extend my leg, mm-hmm. okay, because he wants extension in his leg, I want his leg to be bent, and I would rotate um, to my right, continue to spin with the force of the heel hook, and extend his leg. The reason for that is, here I want his knee on the mat, and if he extends his leg, I can't put his, if he's able to extend his leg fully, I can't put his knee on the mat, so that's why I want his leg to be bent. However, he doesn't do that. He backsteps, which is ironically what he should have been doing in the first place. It's too late for that now. And he facilitates the application of my breaking mechanics. And uh, like I said earlier, I, I could, this time, so the first time I got the heel, I could tell it wasn't tight. This was a completely different matter. Mm-hmm. It was very tight. I could feel it. Um, the, the knee was giving, and he, he tapped. He tapped at the right time. Um, he definitely felt it, but fortunately he tapped before like serious damage was done. Uh, so yeah, when he played, we'll see him back step. Uh, not what he should have been doing here. Yeah, and he went right into it. And uh, yeah, he was not the way happy right there. What I'm going to do is play all that at full speed. Um, because, yeah, you'll see just how quick all that was. There was one, two, yeah. All that was done in two seconds. Yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of... Absolutely, absolutely. Things going on, yeah. Um, yeah. Amazing. Amazing that a two-minute fight can literally be broken down into 20 minutes and, and have a lot 
to be learned from it. That's that's incredible. Um, you were saying earlier about um, the leg lock escapes and counters being almost a lost art and a shameless plug. I know that you've got an instructional out on it. <laughs> shameless plug it, plug it, please, please do. Um, yeah, so funnily enough, I shot it when I was in the UK. Uh, I shot it in okay. Cardiff uh, with uh, Combat Media. Uh, you can find it at combat-media.com. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, I go over uh, in that how to hide your heel. Um, not the way my opponent here does, which is not the correct way to do it. Um, the correct way to do it. I show everything. I mainly cover uh, inside heel of defense. I don't really cover too much outside heel of defense. I cover inside heel of defense. And I also talk about some inside heel of offensive strategies, such as, for instance, the, the movement I, I performed here. Uh, I show a slightly different version of it, but it's, it's, it's still an over-under. It's the same basic idea. Um, of course, specific things are going to change on a match-to-match basis. Um, yeah, so thanks for that. I appreciate it. No, 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 that was great. Have you got um, any other... Inst- I know your, your Instagram is uh, Robert Deagle BJJ. Yeah, Robert, D-E-G-L-E, BJJ. And I'm actually going to be shooting a new instructional uh, next Sunday. So today's oh, amazing. Sunday. Yeah, it's going to be next Sunday. And it's going to be covering the kind of Islamic movement. It's going to oh, be wow. a lot longer. Yeah, it's going to be a lot longer than my previous instructional. Um, this one, it, it's still going to be released by Combat Media. Okay. But we're shooting it here in the U.S., obviously, because of the pandemic. I can't. Yeah. You know, I could actually technically, the UK, you guys don't have closed borders, so I couldn't fly to Cardiff, but the, I'm not going to, that makes, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah, you're not getting yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, I don't even think, I mean, you'll be able to get into the, the gym to record the instructional stuff. So I'm shooting it here, and it's going to be covering the comedy of Asami, where that's the movement I used to initially entangle the legs. There's a lot of nuances and a lot of variations to it. Yeah, well, um, I'll check that out myself because it's um, it's a position that I really love. Yeah, me too, of course. Yeah. Um, it's very strong. Um, uh, any of the sponsors or anything like that that you want to give a shout out to? Uh, no, no sponsors. If anyone wants to sponsor me... Get it sorted. Get him sponsored. What are you doing? <laughs> Get it done. Um, but I, I am moving to, I'll, I'll mention this, I'm moving to Singapore soon, mm-hmm. hopefully soon, uh, as soon as, I don't know, the border situation and everything else comes down uh, to teach and evolve MMA, and uh, I'm really, really looking forward to that. So the sooner that happens, the uh, happier I'll be. Perfect. Okay. Um, Robert, thank you very, very much for this. I really appreciate it. It was kind of yeah, um, last minute for today. It was it was like I messaged and just said, oh, when are you free? And it was, oh, well, right now. Um, yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you for um, yeah, nice. this. I will, I'll will edit it um, probably tomorrow. And okay. then I'll let you know it might be Wednesday when I send it out. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay? I'll repost it, obviously, yeah. Perfect. Okay, and um, yeah, I'll I'll link to everything down in the description, uh, uh, your instructionals and okay. your, your Instagram and anything like that. 